In this video, I'm going to show you how to fold the Origami Tessellation 5 and 4 designed by Erik Gierde. Diagrams are published in Origami Tessellations by Erik Gierde, which is an excellent book on tessellations. I can really highly recommend it. The projects are rated by difficulty from beginner to intermediate to advanced. And there's also a very elaborate section on basics, some of which I've also demonstrated in videos. Now, the model 5 and 4 works on a square grid and it resembles squares, like these squares lying on top of other squares. The squares on the top have uh, four grid squares in width and the one below have five grid squares in width. And this is the front of the model, but the reverse also has a very nice pattern. And so does looking at the model with backlighting. It's really quite magical how these tessellations always have three ways of looking at them at the very least. Now, in this video, I'm going to be using a square sheet of paper with a side length of 24 centimeters or nine and a half inches. And the finished model, which is flat, then has a side length of 15 centimeters or six inches. And this works on a square grid. I have a video on how to fold a square grid very accurately. So go ahead over there and fold a square grid with 32 divisions on each side and then come back so we can get started. Now first we have to locate the center of the paper. I'm going to work on the white side. This is the colored side which will, you know, feature those squares of 4x4 four four and 5x5. Five five. So you can locate the center by simply folding in half and making the crease a little stronger in both directions. And then the paper is slightly more tilted and this is the center. And then you'll go two to the left, two to the right, two the, to the top and two to the bottom. And then you have a square that is four by four. And that's what we're going to concentrate on. Now we're going to make a valley fold along one of those sides of the square. So it's basically two columns to the left and we want to make a strong mountain fold so that it's quite visible, you can see there. And then we're going to take a second edge and again make a strong mountain fold. Just checking that it's in the right location it's probably easiest to do this by checking that you have four rows here. And then we've got that. Now we're going to rotate this so that you have the smaller square you can see here in the top and the larger one in the bottom. Now we're going to make something quite similar to a preliminary base. We have mountain folds here which form an asymmetrical preliminary base and we're going to add creases only in these top four grid squares. So just making very short diagonal creases. I'm aligning edge with edge and then I'm adding a crease just along the first two grid squares, like that. And that is actually the first corner of one of our four by four squares that lie on the top, one of the central ones. So after that, we need to push out the rest of the paper. So I've got this pushed together and now I'm going to push this paper up so that it goes along the grid line that's right next to that folded mountain fold. So I'm pushing the paper up all the way to that point and just making sure that I'm going along the grid line on one side and on the other side. There we go. And once we have that in place, we want to flatten the model. So there we go. And now we're going to fold the tip towards the smaller square.
like that. And then we have the first corner done. And now we can add a second one. So looking at it from this side, we're again going to make that mountain fold that goes through that 4x4 four four square that we observed in the beginning. And it's also quite easy to look at it from this way because you have that edge and then you count one, two, three, four. And then you pull the paper apart a little to get rid of that pleat in that part because we don't really want it. This might unfold a little or completely and that's fine because the paper remembers that state it was in so it will be very easy to refold that section. It's mostly important to really get nice precision on the other corners that you haven't folded yet. Again, I'm just pinching along two grid squares on each side and then again this is the smaller square I'm going to push the paper up along the grid line and same thing right here just going inside there there you go and then you can start flattening this again you see that just aligning and then making a strong crease here. And now you already have half of one of those 4x4 four four squares. Now we're just going to rotate this over and then repeat the same steps. Counting 1, 2, 3, 4, so that's the next mountain fold section. And if you want, you can really prepare both at the same time. And again, making that preliminary base type fold to get those creases in place on both sides. And let's do this one too, so that we don't have to worry about one of them unfolding. Just making nice and precise creases because tessellations, their true beauty is really in the precision. The more precisely you fold them, the more stunning they will be. And again, I'm pushing the paper up along the grid line so that right next to that mountain fold there is a valley fold. And then we can again flatten the paper. And add some more creases. And then you have your first 4x4 four four done. And this is what it looks like from the back. So you have a small 2x2 two two square and then you have these rows and columns that go to the edge of the paper. And now we want to add the next square that looks like this. And for that we're going to count. We're going to count one, two, three, four, five grid squares and then add a mountain fold. So if you're counting from the edge of that already completed square, it's one, two, three. And then you again add a square. So what you do, once you have that mountain fold in place, is you pull that pleat apart so that you can extend the mountain fold in the inside too. And then quite naturally there's this mountain fold here and you can already see that next kind of preliminary base here where you can again add those diagonals that are off grid on one side and also the other. And then as before you're going to push the paper up in forming valley folds here and there and same thing on that side. 
and then you can check the back whether you're happy here. You can see maybe you have to straighten this out a little bit. And then we're forming the next square right next to it. So now the corners are being folded to the top to add those diagonal creases. So now you have half a square done and then you can count one, two, three, four and add the next mountain fold. And here again you need to add those 90 degree pleat intersections just like we did before. And then your second square is done. And now you add another one right here, just like before. So counting one, two, three, four, five, adding a mountain fold. Opening it up to extend it all the way. The other square might unfold a little, but that's not a problem. We're just going to recollapse it later. Once it's been in that shape, it will memorize that shape. Because the paper really wants to go on creases rather than creating new creases. And then pushing the paper up again. One, two, three, four. Mountain fold. Open up and add the off-grid creases to then collapse the square. And here you can see on that section I'm also adding small valley folds to collapse the model and checking from the back that it all looks good before collapsing down. Because once you've added a crease, it's there, so do double check every time. And then you've got one row done. Now you can add another row here and then there. I like to add one in the center first, so I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, as before. Adding the mountain fold and depending on you know what you prefer you might start working on all of them simultaneously but I'll try to really just work on that central one first. So I've got that mountain fold here and then I'm forming the small preliminary base on each side to push the paper up and form the first two corners. Just checking that everything looks okay. Yes, it does. And make strong creases. Then I'm going to go on to the left and the right. Again, same as before. And on this side. And now that you have the top corners of all three squares done, we can work on the lower ones. One, two, three, four grid squares and a mountain fold. And then I'm just going to rotate this to add the corners. Again, I'm working on the central square first.
And then I'm going to start working on the second one to make it easier to collapse the section right here. So I'm adding the diagonals on this section and then why not on that section too. I actually find it easier to do it like that than to complete the square completely and then move on to the next one. So I'm just doing all of these somewhat simultaneously. There you go. And then you can again start collapsing this and check in the back that it all looks quite neat and if needed correct it a little and then press out the corners. That's the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one and the last one. And then you have two rows done. And on this side, the process is exactly the same as on that side. You always count one, two, three, four, five to get that first column started. And here's a close up view of doing it all. And you first add the diagonals. by aligning edge with edge, right here too, and on that side you also have that preliminary base, there you go, and then you push up the paper to get the corner started and you push up the paper to get that corner started and then if you want to collapse this completely without starting the other ones just fold those down and then check in the back that you're happy and then add the creases by collapsing down those two corners and then move on to the next one. Opening up the pleat, doing the small preliminary bases and then pushing up the paper with just one grid column and row next to it. And then check the back and collapse down. And one more time. And then again count down four. One, two, three, four. To complete the square. And again, pull apart to start those small preliminary bases. And I like to do them all simultaneously. So that's the first one. Here's the second one. The third one. Fourth one, and to pull that apart for the last two ones. And once you have those in place, then I'm just going to go from the outside, from one side, to add those small valley folds to start collapsing the model. And same on that side here. So that now 
This is pretty much in shape. Turn it over, check that all of these look quite precise. Fix what you need to fix. And then collapse. Add the diagonal creases. And then your five and four tessellation designed by Eric Gierde is all done. Now this might be not quite flat and you can simply put it inside a very heavy book and maybe put a couple of books on top of it and let it lie overnight and then the model is going to be completely flat and beautiful. If you like this model, you might also enjoy folding clover folding designed by Shutsu Fujimoto or watch my tessellation guide for a more in-depth discussion on how to design your own tessellations. I also have a playlist of instructions for further tessellations. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next videos. And finally, do check out my website happyfolding.com for more origami content. I hope to see you around and happy folding!